shit. That's what was not supposed to happen. Crappity crappity doo And there was the last one. So here I am, two weeks after that video of that leak that you just saw now. And it was not a straightforward job. It could have been a whole lot simpler. So I'm gonna take you on my journey on how I found the root cause to this problem that we have with the fuel center leaks of our, of our defenders. And I'm gonna take you on a step-by-step -step guide on how I made a specialized tool for myself which is going to help me prevent that problem from ever happening again. And should things go wrong for you like they did for me, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of things on what not to do. Because that's what us YouTubers do. We do all the wrong things for you so that you don't have to. I just want to give a big shout out to my friend Chris Nell from Spanaworks. Thanks buddy for giving me all the advice from all your years of experience and for helping me out with some products I didn't have. I've included chapters below so you can skip to whatever section you want to. And I'll meet you right back here after. Enjoy. <laughs> A bit scruffy right now, but anyway. So replacing this, the fuel sender on your Land Rover Defender. If you've been one of those guys that have actually been using a screwdriver to knock it. It's not such a great idea. I'm busy having to sort of deal with a problem as a result of it being hammered like that. In, with the fact that it's been widening the, the, the clips on the tank itself. Now I'm needing to actually sort of take everything apart and try and clamp those together. I hope I'm going to sort that out. But this is the wrong tool to tighten a fuel sender ring. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be manufacturing a tool. And I've already made some prototypes over here. This is my first prototype. Sorry, no. Here's my first prototype. This is my first prototype. And this is my second prototype. And I'm gonna make my final one now and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be doing. All right, so just to show you sort of with the second prototype, how it fits in together. Here's the ring. And you, as you know, this ring needs to be tightened on the, fu on the fuel tank like that in order to clamp the washer that's on this side. And as you know, what the guys do is they knock it with a with a with a uh, screwdriver like that to get it tightened like that. But as you know, it starts creating a groove there, and these pins become in danger, especially with the later ones. These aren't so strong as what they used to be made, um, and it starts actually damaging these pins, and then you actually end up with a problem. But not only that, like I say, this, the clamp from the tank that actually that you're tightening against, if this screwdriver was the, is the clamp, the clamp that you're tightening against on there, this part where the screwdriver is, this clamp, actually becomes wider when you're creating a lot of hammer force on it. And that's the issue that I'm busy dealing with right now. And I'm trying to avoid having to buy a whole new tank just because of a stupid problem like this. So, one needs a, the correct tool for the correct job. And I've created this tool. So as, as, it, as you want to tighten it, as you can see, I've made these teeth over here. And I basically molded it to the, the ring. All right, as you can see, it fits on all three rings and one will be able to tighten it like that. Now my first prototype, I haven't done it yet in the second prototype, but in the first prototype, I've got these holes where I'll be putting actually, where one can actually put the screwdriver in to actually provide torque in order to tighten this all the way nicely okay so that's that's how it's going to be done so how to how to do this is first of all i take a what do you call this thing a caliper right inside caliper okay and i first of all measure i get the caliper adjusted to go from from the clip where you're actually going to be applying pressure to the next clip that you at the exact spot that you'll be applying a, a, a pressure again as well. So 
basically gonna I adjust it adjusted the caliper so that it fits that distance exactly and I've checked to make sure that this ring which is probably made in China make sure that this ring is actually in fact accurate all the way around and it is okay now I take my new one and first of all I'll make the first mark and I'm going to use this seam over here see the seam over here on this on this on this pipe over here I'm going to use that seam I'm going to take my carpet knife and I'm just going to make that as my first one and I'm just going to cut down like that okay so that's my first mark then remember it's going to be taking from the first one I mean from the end to end so this one is going to become my next mark this is difficult doing it with one hand but there it is I've just made the mark there so let me just make that deeper just do it here. all right the second one last one to go but there we go hopefully I can make this mark without cutting myself and just all right, so now I've made my mark, my marks, one, two, three, and now are equally distant. And now next thing I'm going to show you how we're going to carve it to that. But now what we need to do is we need to cut them down. Where our marks are, we've got to cut them down basically because with our ring, it needs to fit in this groove over here like that. All right, each one. Okay, so basically, I mean, if we took the ruler and we went like that, we basically got roughly, we'll have to take it down roughly about, uh, it's about five mils. If we measure on here, see where five mils is, I can see basically, it's basically to the bottom of this next line over here on this, on this uh, pipe. So I'm just going to take my carpet knife this time and just go down to that line all right got the hacksaw and it's just a little mini hacksaw and let's just get that down to there that part out in any case okay all right okay that's that one done done next one is there let's just get now what we're going to do is also about the thick about the distance of this clip over here which is roughly five, four to five millimeters we're going to measure that and cut down a little bit the reason for that is so that this is going to help when we actually need to loosen the ring all right so putting it like that is good for tightening but then to loosen it we're going to want to do that and then get a grip on it to loosen whilst again we're going to need to be using a screwdriver to knock it on this side to get it loose which is not a great thing for these rings we'll break them easily they're very cheap but you know when you're in a position like I am right now where I'm very 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 far away from being able to get uh, parts like this I'm trying to save this right now before having to wait another two weeks just to get one of these rings so taking this roughly around, roughly another four roughly about four mils I'm gonna cut down just slightly I'm just estimating, I'm not going exact. Alright, now I'll just take the, the saw quickly and just about there basically is where I'm gonna cut it down to. Let me do the rest of them. Alright, just to get an idea of to make a line for myself, because I'm gonna cut it cut it down with a hacksaw so I'm just using painters tape I know I've got a bit of a thick painters tape over here but right now that's what I have and I'm just creating my line just like that I'm just going to start in the middle basically over here and just cut according to the line of this masking tape
Okay, and that's the That's the first one. Okay, just got to do that with the next three sides. Okay, and that was the last one. Let's smooth it out a little bit. So cool, nice and that's nice and neat. Let's see how it's fitting. Let's check it out. All right, there that one's there. That one is there on that side. Perfect. And there we go. Okay, a little bit out on that side. Let's see. Okay. There. No, I'm actually perfect. I'm actually perfect. Okay, all right, I know what the problem is. Okay, so, what I need to do now is I need to just taper it in from the outside because it needs to get inside the ring here. All right, it's gonna get inside. Right now, it's on the lip of this metal because literally this pipe is exactly the same diameter um, as this ring. So right now it's sitting on that pipe, but what we want to do is we want to get it to, to, to sit just inside that lip, all right? So I'm tapering. Do that on all three. Um, what do you call it? Teeth? It's called them teeth. Okay, let's see how it fits now. Still needs to be a little bit. Just, it's just going to be a little bit more tapering on. Just a bit more tapering. Let's try this. Let's see how it goes. In there, in there, and in there. Exactly right. Exactly right. And there we are. Gripping it nicely, and if we wanted to loosen it, there we are, in there, in there, and in there, and that would be to go counterclockwise. Isn't that cool? So now all that I need to do is drill the holes over here through to be able to fit the screwdriver through a few a few holes because it's a bit of a tight squeeze in there. There it is. You can just make the um, holes to fit your screwdriver. And that's it. Not bad for something that costs 30 bucks. A tool that costs 30 bucks. A specialized tool that costs 30 bucks. That's what was not supposed to happen. Crappity, crappity doo So, it's the next day, and uh, it's been a lot of communication with um, local workshop and uh, local mechanics and some Land Rover mechanics, and um, just to try and find out what what I can do to rectify this situation now that's from this little mistake and it's turned out to be a bit of a expensive mistake as it's going to require now a new tank but yeah new tank but thankfully a friend of mine Chris from Spannerworks who's uh, he's helped me a lot with uh, my vehicles over the years he gave me this tube of Rain, Rainzo, Rainzo Sil, Rainzo Sil, right? Okay. And um, he's given me very specific instructions on how to actually patch this job up so that I'll be able to actually use the tank and carry on using the diesel that's in it. So, um, yep, let's get that done.
Okay, so second day, and as Chris instructed me to put um, this Ryzen so sil, Ryzen so sil, Ryzen so sil, I freaking say it, it, to put this on top of the washer, a lot of it, and then um, I'm going to be putting some onto the fuel sender and the locking ring too right now, and then put it in. Okay, busy using this Ryzen so and putting this on the locking ring. I already have the fuel sender in. And there the ring is on now and I've just got to twist that using my special tool. Okay so I've twisted the locking ring by hand with this tool. Just putting it there and twisting it in. I've got to bring the wires through this. That's how you got to do it right. And if I just get it there Okay, now to take the shorter screwdriver and just find a position in there I can get it into. There we go. Alright, and now that I've got that there, I can take it and I can twist. Ah, there we go. So we've got it to the end, but as you guys know, one side is off, so which means that that side is lifting. I've got to leave this to dry now. I got one problem though. I just realized that the whole fuel sender has um, has um, twisted as you can see and that's not good. This needs to be straight down so I need to loosen this again. Okay, so right, I've changed the, I've moved the fuel sender as you can see that way so that as I twist, it hopefully should twist with it and then end up being straight. So let's try that again. There we go. There we go. Perfect. All right. Anyway, that I'll seal afterwards. Chris says, leave that to dry. Don't touch it. Leave that to dry for another whole day. So tomorrow, on the third day, I'll be able to put a lot more risin sole over there. And hopefully seal that up mostly. And that will still only be a temporary job. And I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to get the sender out again. Well, I'm going to have to in order to get this tank done once I get the new tank. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow morning. What a crappy piece of work this is. Okay, so hopefully that's going to actually hold the fuel sender in, that I'm not going to lose it on the side of the road. That's the main, that's the, the main point of this patch up of here, actually. Um, yeah, just to connect the pipe up and uh, the wires again, and maybe on the pipe and wires I might just um, add a bit of a cable tie somewhere to that if for some reason while I'm driving the rest of the diesel out, that I'm not going to lose the sender along the way. I'd like to put the sender back into the new tank because there's nothing wrong with the sender. The sender works 100%. Um, and uh, senders can be a little bit expensive, I think, as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, certainly this this job has added up money-wise. Not so great. Um, in hindsight, don't crimp. Don't try and crimp the, 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 the brackets on the tank. I think rather just go to this, fall back on this rising sole, seal it up as best as you can. And um, I think that's going to be the permanent fix. So we're going to see how well this goes. Old and new. Although new and old, I suppose. That's uh, obviously the factory one. It's factory design, but this is an aftermarket stainless steel one. And if you look, it actually looks like the stainless steel one actually has a larger capacity than the factory. That would be interesting to know. I actually hadn't thought of that, that I might be losing capacity. Uh, anyway, a um, bit of confusion that caused me. 
when I when it arrived and so that's why I had to see what was going on with this tank and so I had to just first of all remove the stainless um, this is actually for petrol engines so this is where the uh, electric fuel pump would actually be bolted into so for our 300 TDI's um, it just needs to be sealed up with a cap like that which I manufactured from an old um, PC case which is stainless steel one advantage that the the um, uh, factory one has over the stainless steel is over here where we've got the place to actually insert the uh, fuel sender I gotta get that gunk off still but if you can see there we are see these two slots here well the fuel sender actually has those slots and if you can remember a little bit earlier which was actually last week for me uh, when tightening the fuel sender in the stainless steel the fuel sender whenever I tight when tightening it the fuel sender would would twist with it so that eventually the fuel the, the, the fuel sender was skew and I had to sort of counter it the whole time and it was a bit of a it was very awkward but this one what's nice actually I realized from the factory one I don't know why they didn't do that in the aftermarket one perhaps maybe it was a bit difficult to do because they are a little bit off center and that actually locks the center in, in, in place so that when you actually twist uh, twist the ring tight the fuel center actually stays in position which is great but uh, something interesting and I'm still gonna be finding out what the mystery is is I don't know if you can hear it but let's see there. did you hear that it's like what the hell is inside there man so we're gonna have to try and figure that out is to start bending these things outwards again but I must say this has been an excellent tool to actually use to tighten here 
really worked actually really nicely. Let's see if I just gently go maybe one more time. I think that's about it. I'm gonna leave it there. Oh crap, what was that? <laughs> That was, but um, I'm leaving it. That's all I'm doing. So this is my power. Hey. Now, hopefully, we let the uh, ebb or bleed out. And then we'll take her to uh, take him to go and get him filled out. Filled up, I mean. And uh, see if there's going to be any leaks then. Anyway, cool. Carry on. What a relief to finally have this leak fixed. I've had this diesel leak ever since I bought Robert. By the way, that's what I've named my defender, is Robert, after my late brother. But I've had this leak ever since then. And what a weight of my shoulders to finally have it fixed. Finally. But, it came at a lot of unnecessary cost. And remember in the beginning I said that I would share a lot of things that I learned that one should not do. Oh, I've missed my turn off. Yeah, I just had to open up some farm gates there, but... Um, yeah, unnecessary cost, yeah? But you know, you know, I learned a lot of you here. And, uh, oh, goodness, yeah, this is awesome. Freaking hell, this is why we have a defender, man. <laughs> There's a beautiful spot I'm going to just stop at, get my coffee out, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share with you what I learned. Yeah. <laughs> Got my camping chair. All right, chef. All right. Okay. So unnecessary expense, eh? See, the reason I bought a Defender was that I, I have had zero experience mechanically, but I've loved the idea. I've been an auto fanatic, hence the name of this channel. I mean, I can drive. A, I can drive a vehicle. I can drive a vehicle really well. But the moment something goes wrong, um, I don't know the first thing or what to do. And that's why I bought the Defender, the Defender TDI specifically, in that it's an easy vehicle to learn on, which is great. And taking this now experience with the fuel tank, there's things that I'm learning that isn't even the realm of mechanical knowledge, but it's about life. As I explained, there was this unnecessary expense. I ended up ordering this tank on the very first suggestion I got, <clears throat> literally the day after I put my order in. Chris, again, put me in contact with someone locally who is a metal boffin and who's very confident he'd be able to fix that stainless steel tank, which is so great because that stainless steel tank is really, really solid. Um, made out of looks what looks like two millimeter stainless steel. Um, you know, compared to the, I mean, it, it is really heavy compared to the factory tank. Really, really heavy. Um, I've probably, yeah, cars probably lost about three kgs of weight around the waist. But um, really solid tank that. And this factory tank is such a flimsy tank to have spent to have spent so much money on this new tank when I could have gotten fixed. And you know that's what I realize when things like this happen. You know when the leak just got so bad, um, I panicked. And in my drive and resolve to learn to fix a vehicle, I grabbed the first solution that I got and just rushed at it like a bull in a china shop. You know. Um, there was something I read, a commenter on Facebook, of one, of our, one of our Land Rover Facebook groups. And if you're watching this, man, you know, thank you very much for commenting that. You probably don't realize um, how much you actually spoke into my life there. I love the way he put it. He basically just related very shortly a story of what he does when he has a breakdown along the road. So when his defender breaks down on the road, he said, after looking and inspecting the damage, the first thing he does is not break out the tools. 
the first thing he does, takes out his camping chair, takes out the gas, and starts bringing himself a cup of coffee, and has some snacks. It's in that, when we are first flung into stormy waters, in panic, we grab, try and grab at the first floating things that come by our, that, that come floating by us. But trying to grab onto those things would demand a sacrifice. When, when if we're able to just step back, take stock, and come into a place of rest and peace, the answers will come to you. And this has been quite a big life lesson for me. So for these nuggets of all aspects of life, why don't you consider clicking on the link down below and joining me for a cup of coffee. And if you haven't checked out the previous video of me reviewing those lights, check it out. And if you happen to have a product that you might be interested in having me review, contact me on Facebook, Instagram, email, all of the links in which you will find in the About section of this YouTube channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers.